Okay, Roy, this is the solar to hydrogen electrolyzer to hydrogen storage to the fuel cell to the motor that is in the Solar Hydrogen Civilization book. Can you explain this for us? Well, it's a model of what I proposed in the 1960s as a continental scale invention for harnessing wind where it was plentiful, such as we do here. And this becomes then a wind turbine driving a generator that runs this unit as an electrolyzer, which is the same as this unit that's presently the electrolyzer because it's in a solar rich moment. So they're both the same? They're both the same and this is then the representation of the deserts and other places where you'd collect solar energy, convert it to electricity and then to the fuel potential energy in hydrogen and oxygen. So this represents then the depleted natural gas and oil fields that are recharged with hydrogen and incidentally this principle is without compressors going all the way to storage pressure or downhole pressure in depleted natural gas and oil fields to restore bottom pressure, bottom hole pressure that uh, will re-establish production from what are now uh, low pressure fields. So this, so this is your electricity source, in this case it's solar photovoltaic panels. The electricity goes through this cell which is an electrolyzer which is the same as the other one, which is a fuel cell, so it's both a, it's reversible, a reversible fuel cell then. That's right. Both are reversible, both are equal, and both are able to operate whenever a wind or solar or wave or hydro source, or for that matter, any other central power plant has surplus electricity to store then hydrogen and oxygen at pressure as we may need it locally or later through storage that goes through the natural gas pipelines, in the case of hydrogen, to depleted natural gas and oil fields. So here we have the uh, hydrogen storage in this tube, and there are the water columns above it, so it's slightly pressurized. Here we have the oxygen uh, stored into this tube. And, oops, oh no, that hurt. Um, to turn it around, over here we have the output tube from the hydrogen and the output from the oxygen going down to the fuel cell which is converting the gases into electricity which is going to the little motor with the uh, windmill. Yeah, it's reversible as well. It's a, a motor generator and at the moment it is being demonstrated as a motor. But I also note, and importantly so, we're making water and we could just as well have started with bad water or ocean water and produced hydrogen. One kilo of hydrogen then produces nine kilos of pure water. So it's also a water purification system in operation as much as it is a, an energy distribution system. So this is reversible then. So this, instead of being spun by electricity, this could be a motor, uh, a, a wind generator that the wind is blowing that's making electricity that's going through this fuel cell, reversible fuel cell slash electrolyzer, making the hydrogen and oxygen that's then going over here to that acting as a fuel cell to run another power load. Yes, that's quite correct. And it could just as well be charging a uh, local storage in someone's home or a factory. Or it could be uh, going right to the transportation applications that we'll discuss in more detail uh, later. So you could actually run both of the cells as electrolyzers and turn around and run both the cells as fuel cells. Yes, quite right. And meet peak loads or store energy when you have surplus electricity from any source. So this gives a way to level the utilization of the existing grid. And again, our theme is to get a much larger return on investment for what we already have than if we continue on present standards of burning up the fossil reserves or creating radioactive fuels and doing so with a large penalty in terms of efficiency and aftermath of disposal and so forth following decommissioning.